Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day. Winter's finally slowly going away. I don't normally walk with my 8x10 camera on my shoulder on a tripod so I can slip and fall and wreck the whole deal. But I've wanted to photograph these tree roots for a long time. I've wanted to make uh, 8x10 negative on these tree roots with a lot of detail and I've come out to do that today. And the parking lot is is super close. It's 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 30 seconds away. So I set my camera up in the parking lot so I didn't have to do it in the snow here and just walked here. Today I'm going to take you through my Keith Canem camera. This is an 8x10 wood field camera. This is the traditional wood field camera and this is a wonderful, wonderfully built camera. I love this camera. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to do a few photographs around here and show you kind of how it works and working with it in the field and we'll look at the results. And then in my studio, I'm going to take you through the complete camera of how it's made, the movements that it has, how it unfolds, how to fold it up and why I think it's a great camera. This is really a wonderful camera. So I'm just going to wait for the light a little bit, it's a little harsh on these roots and then we will... Uh, start taking a few photos and see what we can come up with today. For this picture, I'm using wide angle lens. I'm using a 240 millimeter lens and I'm going to be shooting on Ilford Delta 100 film. And that should really give me some great quality on this, on these roots. The light's actually gotten kind of interesting on that one big one right now. Um, but there's going to be a huge difference in exposure from the ones in the shade and ones in the highlight. But I might try one here with the light like this right now. One thing you get to know about this camera really quickly is all the little T knobs and stuff are very intuitive what they do. The bottom does the rise and fall. The top one does the access tilt. And how you focus the camera, it's really good. They have these two separate levers that you can loosen one and it keeps a little bit of tension on it and you can just do some fine focus. So once you get to know the what all the little levers do here and the T-knobs, it comes very intuitive in working out in the field here with this camera. I'm gonna do a long exposure of these little falls with these fallen trees in here. It's an 11 second exposure.
This is the lovely Keith Canham 8x10 wood field camera. You saw me working with it just now. And let me take you through the steps of how to unfold this camera, kind of the movements that this camera has, what it's made of, and why I think this camera is so great. I really think Canon makes one of the nicest 8x10 field cameras you can get. It is, uh, it is nice and light. This is made out of American black walnut wood, and all of the aluminum is aircraft space grade aluminum. So that means it's very strong, but then it's very light as well, and that contributes to the weight. The weight of this camera is just over nine pounds, just the camera alone. So it's a great camera for going out into the field, and I've even walked around with the camera on my shoulder and uh, walked around like that. So I'm a really big fan of this camera. To start unfolding this camera, it has a small hook here in the front. This hook latches the front so that it doesn't pop up, even though when you should uh, put this camera away, you should, you should tighten everything up. But it has a hook here so it can unhook, and then this is how the front pops up. When you are taking apart this camera or opening it up, you wanna make sure that everything is loose here. You don't want anything tight. Whenever anything is really tight on any large format camera, never start pushing it or pulling it, trying to figure out what's wrong. It usually means something is caught or something is, is, is really tight. So you wanna untighten everything to get this camera to work properly and to unfold properly. Now the way I like to fold this up is you take these, this front standard and then the bellows just pops up in place and then you lock them the front in place like this. On the front and the back, it has a front indent. So you know when it will pop into place naturally and that's the place that the, the front standard or the rear standard should be. It has a front lever here, and with the two plates, you can see when they're perfectly aligned, and you can feel that they're even and perfectly aligned, and then all you need to do is just tighten that up. And a lot of things with this camera and other cameras too, is never over tighten that stuff. When you over tighten it, that's when you start stripping the bolts or stripping the tightening screws on it. And same goes for the back here. They have two bars here, and it has uh, some back levers that you just tighten those both up and they are for the swing and for the shift. So you need to tighten those up and of course you need to just tighten up the side here as well with these two uh, knobs. I love how Keith has made these little T knobs instead of a regular knob. They are much more easy to, uh, to hold and to tighten and to loosen and especially when you're underneath working underneath your dark cloth. They're really easy to get up and get at as well. Of course, one of the things that I always take is I have a rear glass protector because there's nothing worse than if you're traveling. I mean, this glass can take a little bit, but you give it a good smash and the, the, you know, your day of shooting is over when you go out and if your ground glass is busted. These aren't very expensive, so I always have basically on every camera that I own, every large format camera that I own, I have one of these ground glass protectors. Now on the front here, the Canon camera has two tilts. It has an axis tilt here on the front that you tighten with the top T knob here. And then the bottom here is the front and rise for the camera. The other thing that it has, it has base tilt as well. So you can go from the bottom and you can go back tilt and you can go front tilt for base tilt. And again, it has knobs where it naturally goes into 90 degrees and you can tighten, up, tighten it up there. The front lever, when you loosen it, it has front swings. This camera has more movements than you will ever need on any type of a camera. You could twist this camera up into a pretzel and it's got that many movements. That's one of the great things about this camera. The rear here as well, it has front tilt and back tilt with those T-knobs. 
and it has indents to lock it into 90 degrees. On the bottom at the top, you have rear swings, and then you tighten that up. And at the bottom here, the bottom lever, you have rear shift, and you have a generous amount of rear shift. One of the great things about these wood field cameras from Canon is that you can actually change the back and the bellows and make this into an 8x20 camera or 7x17 camera or a 4x10 camera. So you have options to make this one camera base into, into four different cameras. The way you focus on the Canon camera is by these locking levers. So these levers along the base here lock and then you have focusing knobs. So when you unlock the front levers, you have rear focusing here. If you unlock the back levers, you have rear slide of the back here. And one of the great things about the rear slide of the back is that it lets you shoot extremely wide angle lenses with this 8x10 camera. And then on the inside, there's two locking levers on the inside and that will give you front focusing. Now it's a little different than a Deerdorf. If you're used to a Deerdorf camera that just has the focus button and on the opposite side it has the lock of the focus button, this camera operates a little differently. You have to get a little used to how these locking mechanisms work. But once you get used to it, it's a really good ingenious system. The other great thing about it too is that you can lock one side and you can still make minute focuses so that your focus isn't throwing really quickly and then once it's in focus you can lock the other side and then your camera is locked down. Now if you notice I have the back in portrait mode right now but to move it into horizontal mode there's a sliding tab the back comes off like this you can put the back orient the back this way or that way either way and then the bottom just slides in it goes back in and you put the tab down and then the back is locked in place. The really nice thing about these backs, the way Canon makes them, they are really precise, they work really well. Just takes your thumb to pull out the back a wee bit and the holder just slides right in and then you can take a photo like that. And to put a lens on, he uses Signer boards. This is an old Gortz de Gore 12 inch lens. I love this lens, it's got a really unique look. And on the front here you can see there's actually two tabs that hold the lens board in place. And you have to make sure that you tighten both tabs because some uh, mounts you just put the bottom in and then you just tighten the top. But on this one, you have to tighten both. So it just slides right in there you tighten the bottom, you tighten the top, and then your lens is in there. And that's a great looking camera too. One of the things the Canon cameras are known for is for the bellows throw. And this thing has a ton of bellows. I mean, it still even goes farther than that. I've never used that much bellows, but that gives you an idea of how far it can go. So you can use great telephoto lenses, you can do extreme close-ups. It also has a little tab up here to lock your bellows up so that you don't get bellow sag there, which works really well. Now, of course, one of the other things that you can do with a Canon camera is you can put a wide-angle bellows. These Canon cameras are just beautifully, beautifully made. I bought mine direct from Keith, who is down in Phoenix. The other nice thing this camera has, is it has two level spirits on the top here for your forward and your side level. Um, those are really nice feature to have on any camera. If there's one thing that I could change on this camera, it would be the strap. This is kind of a cloth, canvas, uh, braided strap, and it's okay, it's nice. You know, it works really well, you can carry the camera, but I think a camera like this really deserves a really nice lush kind of leather strap that, that sticks out. I think it would suit this camera better and I think it would look better. This works really well. There's, there's no problems with it. 
but aesthetically, I think a really nice leather strap would look really good on here. Now I know people are gonna ask me, I use a Manfrotto number 229 three-way tripod head. It's a little heavy, but there's a lot of torque that goes on when you use an eight x 10 camera and big lenses like this. So you need something that's really solid and it also has bubble level spirits in it. So it's a really good head for this. This is a Gitzo GT3541 XLS tripod. It's a great tripod. It's enough to hold the weight of this and yet it's not too heavy and bulky. So this tripod works really well. Some of the accessories I use to carry this system, to carry my eight x 10 folded up, this is an old low pro photo trekker aw bag that works really great it's got a great harness on it that works really good i like that um, i use a canon four times loop for focusing on the back and again it's nice and bright uh, it has a little bit of a rubber eye cup that um, i really like it's nice and soft and this works really good of course, you're gonna need a dark cloth, and this is just uh, some big dark cloth that I got from somewhere, I can't remember, I've had it for so long. But it's a good heavy dark cloth, and you really need it dark, especially when you're shooting outside like this. There's a lot of light that goes in there. Your eyes have to adjust, so when you wrap yourself around there, you really need it dark back there so that you can see, especially the corners on the ground glass. And as you saw me using out in the field, this is my NAS gear film holder. It holds three eight by 10 holders. I love this thing because you can hook it onto the tripod and you can work right out of it. It also has loops for um, a handle, uh, a, a carrying handle. But the problem is they don't make these anymore. You can find them used on eBay once in a while. They go really quickly. But there's a guy down in California, it's called Stone Photo Gear, and he makes something very similar in different colors. I've bought some of his stuff, and his stuff is of great quality. I really like it a lot, and he is supporting the large format world. So a shout out to him. I really like his gear. Other than that, I have a light meter, and that's about all I need for going out and shooting with my 8x10 camera. The last thing, is folding this camera up. Now, the way to fold this camera up properly is you really need to loosen everything, all the bars, and once you loosen everything, then things will start going into place where they go here. So I like to loosen all the T-bars. This comes out, that just slides down like that. Loosen this back that closes, that just uh, latches in on the front there like that. And then after it is closed, then you tighten everything up. And then once you tighten everything up, nothing is gonna slide. Put my ground glass protector back in. So throughout my career, I've had a lot of different eight x 10 cameras. I've had the Kodak Master camera. I have had the Deerdorf camera. I've had a bunch of different 8x10 cameras and by far this is the best built uh, 8x10 camera that I've used, it's the lightest. I really like this camera a lot. I love the 8x10 format, it slows you down. The quality you get out of it is amazing. The black and white, the rich creamy tones, the color images are amazing when you get to shoot color. It is a wonderful format to use and to work with. I hope you liked this episode. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next time. Cheers. But the results that you get of it, out of it are amazing. Fucking plain again.